couldn't be prouder uh, to call Karen Bass my friend, my sister. I couldn't be prouder to welcome all of you here uh, to the center of our town, the most diverse city anywhere in the United States of America, to celebrate the inauguration of a woman who's always been a coalition builder. This is a woman who has never, ever, she's proud of who she is, she's proud of where her people have come from, but she's always understood the power of bringing people together. Here before us today, there are hundreds of young people. America should allow them to be anything their talent and intelligence can make them. If America fails these people, if through indifference or callousness, they are denied jobs, opportunities, or education, then the American dream will have failed. African-American speaker in the United States of America, in the history of the United States. That's Karen Bass. Karen was also appointed to the Foreign Affairs Committee, where she will take the values of our country abroad where she recognizes the challenges to the conscience of our country, of poverty in Haiti, and AIDS in Africa, and the list goes on. I'm so excited that she is there, because again, it's about a strong America, but America that is recognized for its values, the strength of its values, as well as the strength of its military might. So I'm so excited that she's on that committee. She's going to do an absolutely great job but not only just there, within the full Congress of the United States. You know, when a new class comes in, a freshman, we look around, those of us who've been there around a while, and we say, here they are, the fresh recruits. <laughs> the intention of our founders to have an election every two years to constantly reinvigorate the Congress of the United States. Who among them is going to rise in the leadership here? Who among them is going to go on to higher office? Who among them could be the President of the United States? When Karen Bass came to the Congress, everybody knew a very special person had shown up. children and her work for education and creation of jobs and, and her work of, on health care. She's going to be there to stand firm with us as we fight the attempts to repeal health care for all Americans. Right. 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 Consumer protections which we passed in the last con Congress. Maxine was in the lead on that on her banking, on the financial services. We needed Karen Bass. Thank you for sending her to the Congress. Yeah. And now, it's beautiful to hear those young people recite the pledge to the flag. I always love the last words. We pledge under God liberty and justice for all. That's what Karen Bass is coming to the Congress to do. Make sure that we have liberty and all of that implies and justice, social, economic, every kind of justice for all. And the transition that she made from Karen Bass to Congresswoman Karen Bass, the gentle lady from California, we talk that way in the It's called civility. <laughs> it's when she raised her hand to take the oath of office to our Constitution. Not just a series of provisions and amendments, but for what it stands for, making us the freest people in the world. 
thank God our founders allowed the bill, the Constitution to be amended. Yeah. Now the freest people in the world. And so it is my great pleasure to be with each and every one of you. I could talk all day about Karen Bass, and you probably think I'm going to. <laughs> When I went through difficult times serving as speaker, I often looked to Speaker Pelosi for inspiration. I watched as she managed the near collapse of the U.S. economy, as she managed the military and moral issues surrounding two wars, and managed all the other key domestic and foreign policy issues. And in spite of these challenges, she succeeded in passing very significant legislation, all the while being the first woman speaker in U.S. history. Give her another one. Congresswoman Watson, I only hope that I can serve with a percentage of the grace, dignity, and integrity in which you have served. From the time I was first elected to office, I have tried my best to emulate your spirit of service and your leadership. Thank you so much for all that you have done for us for so many years. of mine wrote me recently and said, I'm not sure if he's in the audience, Jeff Schatz, uh, but he wrote me and he said, uh, Karen, I don't know what it is with you. First you become speaker and the state plunges into the worst recession since the <laughs> And now you go to Washington and the Republicans take over and a group of very strange people descend upon the nation's capital. <laughs> You always seem to end up in these really difficult situations. <laughs> but you know, it is very difficult situations that frankly cement my resolve and strengthen my commitment to fight for the values that define who I am. <laughs> these are very challenging times and we truly stand at the crossroads in our country. One path takes us forward into this new century, the other path takes us backwards, frankly back to the early part of the last century, but I do know which path to take. <laughs> 